Hello and welcome. I am Ehi Nakimio, and um, as it is now, we are live. Today, we're going to be talking to a dear friend of ours, a man who is generally regarded as um, Mr. Entertainer himself, all the way from Stockholm, Sweden. Now he has worked with so many amazing artists, uh, at least Afrobeats artists, and he has been in the game for a very, very long time. We're, we're talking about um, way over 10 years, actually. And he, from what I, um, what we recall, he started way back when uh, the business of of um, organizing events was not so popular across Europe. So he got in early in the game and uh, he has made a name for himself. And he has uh, hosted artists like Timaya, uh, Fino, you name it, and the list is endless. And um, I do know that um, his speciali specialties actually, especially when it comes to um, old school jams and old school events and so many areas like that. So um, I will be bringing him into the studio. He's actually waiting in the green room right now. We're talking about Mr. Dominic Mene from uh, Afrodan, Sweden. Today, the main issue, the topic that we're going to be facing and discussing is about the life of the artist. And we'll be talking about, um, as we had put out the advert, if, for instance, uh, with a lot of collabos that are happening across the world right now, if indeed uh, the African artist is the one benefiting from it. So let's just try and get Mr. Dominic and do and, and get on with the show. I know that's why you guys are here. So let's go into it. So, Mr. Dominic, are you there with me? Yeah. Good afternoon, Mr. E, and uh, good afternoon to the Czech Republic, all the fans of Afrobeats. Yeah. In Europe and the world, you're all welcome to this very special occasion. Okay. Okay. So, um, how are you doing today, sir? How are you? Yeah. Yeah, Stockholm is a beautiful day, um, 24 degree and um, sun is shining and uh, hopefully it's going to be like this on Friday, which we're going to have our uh, our Afro dance Sweden uh, midsummer party. Okay. Generally in Sweden, sometimes midsummer is always raining and um, not really nice weather, but it looks like we're going to have a beautiful sunny day in this weekend. That is lovely. Okay. Okay, hopefully that's what, but uh, we, we're going to go into that. I know that you're itching to tell us much more about um, what that event has in store for everyone. But before we go into that, let's dig into the issue at hand. You, We're going to talk about all the things that um, the whole of um, Sweden, and I, I'm sure a lot of uh, folks in across Scandinavia, across Europe, will be interested in knowing who the artists are, what the lineup is, and and all that. So, but before we go into that, let's let's dive into this issue. As a um, an events promoter, right? You have dealt with all these artists. You have met quite a lot of them. Now, um, what do you think? Do you think that uh, the collaborations that are going on across the world is something that we should be looking forward to? Is something that that is helping the industry? Is it something that um, um people should actually reconsider and think about carefully before going into it well generally i think um you know because of uh um where nigerian uh perspective is coming from when it comes to the industry because the government is not really behind the industry because the industry is an individual thing, the talent that they stop. So I think the artists, the individual artists that are going to structure collaborations are probably gaining individually, but it's not really helpful uh, when it comes to general generality of the of the industry in uh, in Africa or, or the country in particular. It just it just uh, I think it just an uh, awareness for the individual artists that are have to have to get an opportunity right now. That's how I see it. But maybe at the at the end of the day, it will be an exposure for
for for the whole industry. Okay, so the the reason why the reason why I um I brought this up is basically because of this. I had seen there's a new song by um, a collab between between um, uh, Chris Brown and yeah. Whiskey. Now these guys have been friends for quite a long time. They have been they have been um, they have he Chris Brown has shown up at his concerts and vice versa. So so much of that has happened in the past, but. One of the reasons why I'm bringing this up is that I'll bring another artist. We had talked about this artist before, Fireboy, for instance. Yeah. We have the shows and we have the, we have the actual songs and we have the remixes. Now, Fireboy had this really massive jam last year, and that one, Peru, we all know about that one. It was it was yeah. it was massive on its own. Massive. Yeah. Then Ed Sheeran jumped on it, did the remix and um everybody starts to celebrate now we sometimes tend to forget that that people like fella and nikola kutkuti people like uh, sonia day and so many of the of the past greats right the legends had done quite a few collaborations with with other artists across the world before now and uh for them they had kept it straight right there was no there was no mention of oh uh, Fela had done such and such and such with such an artist, and therefore this is the song because he had done this. Therefore, this song of Fela will get even bigger than than what he was at that time. What is the difference now? Why is it different now? The difference now is that uh, those days of Fela period, um, R and B, hip hop, reggae, dancehall were major thing that they were they had their own stand they were they were more popular than the afrobeat and whatever it is but now the table has, is the right way around afrobeat has taken over from those uh, music so it is the interest of those uh, uh, guys from from the other side from the us jamaican that are into rmb hip-hop and whatever they want to collaborate with the afrobeat just to keep them on the sub, on the spotlight because they are going down and they are not bringing any new songs. Mm -hmm. So and they find out that these guys, these Afrobeat, these Nigerian boys, are the one on the spotlight. So they want to shine up with them and they're able to do collaboration with them. So that's that's that is different right now. So okay. they are the one actually getting the spotlight. So they're the ones benefiting. Yeah, they're so the benefiting. I, so I saw I saw a concert in the UK. I think they were celebrating uh the queen of england's golden jubilee or something like that and yeah it's sure and performed peru right there at that point it almost seemed as if he was the one who had come up with that song without anybody really giving any credit to to fireboy so yeah. that was an issue that that i felt okay something is missing here now this is a, this is a conversation that i think um artists the afrobeats artists need to start to look into um another one was uh, beyonce's album i think the last album that she had where she had all the all the big names yemi alade was there um burner boy was there whiskey was there um tiwa savage was there the some of the Ghanaian artists were also part of that album that was a big issue across the world they felt that Beyonce was stealing from Africa, even though she is African American, even yeah. though her intent was probably good, even though she, uh, it seemed as if she was trying to push the frontiers for the Afrobeat artists even further than what it really is right now. A lot of people felt, I think even uh, Burner Boy felt that he was being slighted. He didn't really get the kind of credit that he deserved from it. So somehow they didn't really push or promote that album per se. I think in such a way that that uh, Beyonce was the one who benefited. And when you talk about the returns, we don't know how much they get out of it. Funny thing also happened, even in that same collaboration with, with Wizkid, uh, they, won, they won, I think that song, the song that they had, uh, Brown Skin Girl, won yeah. a Grammy. Yeah. I don't know if you know about that. Yeah, sure. sure and definitely. So imagine that on the back of Whiskey, that song won a Grammy. 
and a girl, his uh, Beyonce's daughter, who literally said one or two lines, was also yeah. part of the Grammy award uh, award winning team. So that is what I'm. That those are the issues that we're looking at. How can we? What can what can the industry do to change the perspective? What can the industry do to to create such a way in uh, such a way? I don't know if how, how to explain it that that the Afrobeats artist is the one who benefits more. Yeah, you know the the issue is that because um, um, already uh, the American artists or the the Americans or the Afro. Uh, Americans are based on they because of their society have already given them those kind of uh, mechanism and the, uh, the the engineering and the uh, spotlights for them to able to shine. So it's like uh, we the Afro the, the Africans are just it's like they are just uh, grateful for them to to able to to be happy that they got uh, one of these noticed. Uh, yeah 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 to, to be part of, of of their of their co collaboration or to come into the american spotlight so it's like we uh they the africans are kind of they are begging for it now so maybe at the end of maybe later on probably a couple of years it might be a different ball games so right now they, they think that they need them they need their uh, because they have all the all the machineries Okay. That's, that's our scene. Mm, so we still need, we're still working on it and waiting for the exposure. Waiting for the right. exposure, so, yeah. So, yeah. So much more work to be done. Now let's go into, let's go into the midsummer. Why yeah. is midsummer so special in, in Scandinavia? Why is it so special well, in Sweden? Well, in Sweden, you know, Sweden is um, uh, generally um, a cold country. Um, we have more winter than the summer. So when it comes to the midsummer, is um it's a big uh, celebration, mm. and um, and that happens uh, probably in the June. They have the midsummer. That is when the sun is uh, more. The sun goes longer than the day. Yeah. So the sun is the sun is shining. I mean, the, the sun can go up to up to uh, from um, uh, from eleven p.m. It will be brightening all the whole day, so it will be just yeah. almost almost daylight all the night. Okay. Yeah. So so mm. it's a special night, and and they celebrate. It's a big holiday in Sweden. Yeah. And um, normally, uh, best midsummer is to be raining and sometimes, but uh, it's a couple of years when they, you know these climate changes are start going yeah. on, it becomes to be sunny and all that. So it's a big uh, celebration, and um, after that, Sweden and. Uh, uh, most of the midsummer, most Swedes they travel out of the out of the city. They go to the country yeah. homes. Okay. That's where they celebrate. That's, that's where they celebrate their um the yes, midsummer. midsummer. Yeah, and a um, couple of I think eight years ago, uh, when I started Afro dance with, I just said, oh, um, well, there was one of these midsummer. There was every, the town was dry. Everybody was mm. was gone. So most of the Africans, uh, foreigners. They were just home nothing was happening and um they couldn't go anywhere they don't have any as most of the clubs too are closed so that was right okay oh let me try to do a midsummer party in, in, you know why not so i started i think it was about eight years ago that i did uh, a midsummer party and i brought uh, uh most wanted uh dj dj i from from belgium i brought uh, and some other djs here and there and it was it was really up nice it's mm. awesome you know so and since then i started uh i think i've been doing miss uh mr party a couple of years then i think i stopped about four years ago before the COVID. um you know after, before the COVID. and um after this COVID, i have not been doing any party because uh most of the venues that we used to use here in stockholm they are uh, literally gone down they couldn't okay. able to cope with it, with the uh, miss some with, with the uh, with the COVID. So yeah. um, after that, I've been taking my time. I didn't want to um, go into um, having a 
my gigs in just anyhow venues. So I asked, okay, let me wait, let me just take my time and um, look for the right time. And I'm not really, um, really near of doing party because if, if you know, I mean, I started doing this since for for many many years now, and, and um, I think I'm kind of retired in a way. You know? <laughs> yeah, so 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 I'm not really um, really. I just want to let the, the younger guys to do their thing. So, but when I come across this boat, I, I went to there was um, an award they invited me. Uh, it was some uh, Filipinos that were doing an award. They called me. They said yeah. they wanted me to come and participate. So it, it was done in that boat. And I went there okay. and and I saw the place and I uh, was wow. So this is a, uh, this is nice place. And it was in the winter anyway. It was around okay. I think that, that was last year. You know, November uh, around November, winter time. You know, I love mm. the place. So. This time around, I contacted the guy. He told me, "Oh, it's fully booked. You know, it's only one day that is many. It's fully booked in October." Then wow. he said it was only this Friday, this on twenty-four, because of, because it was the midsummer. Because most mm. Swiss, everybody is traveling out of the out of town. Yeah. I, I said, I said, wow, I can take it. I will take the risk. You know, I love the place, and uh, it's a perfect midsummer uh, location mm. here, Venice. So, and that was how it comes about. And I said, wow, this, this might be my first uh, uh, party pre-COVID. Yeah, and the, post-COVID. The, the look, the, yeah, yeah, post-COVID, yeah, sorry. Yeah. And, the, and the, uh, the location is really fantastic. So I think um, we're going to love it. And that was how the idea came out. So, okay, I think among all my uh, uh, events I've been doing, because I've been doing a lot of different kind of um, events, it could be uh miss summer party it could be ladies night could be a uh, white party it could be this could be this that's okay let me choose the miss summer it's just at the right date and mm. um, so that's that's all we and the, the response has been going amazing amazing wow and, um, Quite impressive. and uh yeah and uh, when i just started um i got a call from a girl from from norway she told yep. me oh dominic i've been seeing your events i would love to be part of this and I check out her music, and music is really wonderful. Her name is Naga. She's uh, she's a born she's a Kenyan and living in uh, Norway. Okay. Um, um, so she will be part. She will be one of the guest artists. Mm-hmm. Then I have another guy called uh, Dawon, and he's uh, originally Lebanese. And okay. he was born. He came here when he was young, and he's a mm-hmm. rapper. And um, yeah, they're doing a doing a lot of collaboration with some different artists. So he's so he's a rapper. He's really really good. Then I got this jam kid. Uh, it's another uh, really. He just released a song called Hello, uh, and that Hello is about it's about summer, uh, summer red. That's what it's called in Sweden. So and he said, wow. And I got Asha Jones, one of the people that manage him, and called me. Said, Dominic, I think this this artists and the song uh, go perfectly to your program and i watched it i say yeah now everything is just naturally taking care of itself so i have three super talented artists that really ram up the event how do you how do you manage to find these artists you see you have this like a pool where you're always digging up all these artists from it's really really difficult especially you know, these parts. how do you do yeah, it? Yeah, you know, sometimes you see, if you build a major, if you build a platform, the artists will look for you because mm. they know they know that at your platform they can get the right exposure, they can get good promotions. Yeah, because for me, any artist that come through me definitely got exposed because I do really have to market the artists. Yeah. So and um, this, I've not worked with them any any of this actually before, because I have got I worked so many, so many, so many upcoming artists. Yeah. But these three, mm-hmm. I have never worked with them before, and um, this is how I do. I I don't like, you know, repeating the same thing. I like to get new things all the time. Mm. So and these three, they are good in their own different way. So I think they're really gonna really measure. And make the occasion normally sometimes before i used to get djs from outside 
I said Scandinavian, but this time around I said, no, let me use my legendary DJs, DJs that have been working for too long. Um, this DJ Junior and DJ Mike, these are, uh, these are, these are my legendary DJs. They have been playing for many, 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 many years because they know they can see the public and they say, yeah, this is what the public needs. Because most of my public are just matured minds. I deal with public from um, my fans are from 35, 40, you know, they, they can, this, this kind of ages. I, uh, so they know when they come, they know what they're going to get. They're going to have a classic night. Okay. So these are, these are your go-to uh, DJs because I've seen, I've been um, at shows with DJ Junior. I've been at shows with um, DJ Mike also. Yeah. Uh, what's, what kind of music are we, are we expecting to hear on that, on that day? Yeah, actually, um, it's going to be a mist, mist, mist music, and it's going to be uh, literally Afrobeat, the new generation of Afrobeat. Okay. Then we're going to play the old Afrobeat. Yeah. I'm going to play a little bit of old school music. Okay. You know, yeah, that's going to be old school because because my uh, my goal right now is that I want to go back into old school music. Okay. Wow. That has yeah. been that has actually been missing quite a lot on the um, events marketing uh, platforms all over. So so we love the new stuff, but of course there's so much beautiful, amazing music from from the past that we should also um, enjoy. When when does the boat leave? No, this boat actually that is that is. A Was it leaving or is it stationary? It's going to be stationary. A lot of people have been calling me because that that I did not really um uh put out uh, direct, uh clearly because a lot of people have been they wanted to know if the boat is leaving it's going to just going to stand still because some people don't like um they don't want to go by boats that move around they're a little bit scared of water so why some love it so so the, those boats is not going to be moved it's going to be just station one place we have it's a it's a two deck uh they have a, a top deck where you could enjoy the sea breeze and okay. you know, enjoy yeah then we have downstairs where you can have the disco and the bar the drinks and uh, all, all different rooms there downstairs okay, okay. So, so so it's going to be a stationary boat that will not move around okay 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 because that was uh, that's a, that's an issue the nice one that you're you're able to clear that one so the party starts at what time exactly uh, the party start by the, the the doors open from eight o'clock, but okay. the party start from nine nine from... nine p.m. three okay. three a.m. Okay, till three a.m. Yeah. So uh, um, let's look at you know before we close on on this issue, let's look at the the Afrobeat scene currently. What what do you see changing? I mean, post pandemic, what do you see changing? What has changed? How is the scene like? Do you, has it gotten to the level? that it left off or has it gone beyond that since um since we saw the the industry especially in scandinavia because you did a lot it, of work building it yeah, so let's, yeah, let's yeah yeah i think i think uh, it has changed a lot right okay. now um now we have a lot of swedish promoters okay that are coming coming into afrobeat now yeah. because uh generally before they used to uh promote uh, American artists, Euro European artists, but those artists are no longer um, viable, marketable yeah. anymore. Yeah. So now they are going, we are going into Afrobeat. Mm. Most of like one uh, Live Nations and all those kind of big, big, big companies yeah. that have been doing this kind of stuff. They are now literally going into Afrobeat. So, which is good for Afrobeat music. And, Is it really? um, yeah, well, it's good for Afrobeat music, but maybe, maybe it might not go for the uh, Afrobeat uh, promoters. Yeah. Local ones that have been working so All hard to promote these things. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so I don't know. It's like we have done the job. Somebody yeah. has come to eat the food. The food. So, what can we do about it? How can we change that? What can we? Uh, what can we do to? You can't. We. You can't just give up because it's basically saying that um, there's this cultural uh, appropriation, which is an issue, and yeah, I yeah. think it's something that we should put out there is a, is a discussion maybe not for for today's show but it's something that we have 
we have embarked upon this discussion. And I think it's something that we need to continue because you have worked, like I said, you have worked so hard to build up the industry. And all of a sudden, because they have more resources, they have better venues, they have uh, better better links in terms of getting the audience. And, venues, yeah, yeah. And, and then Afrobeats is very popular now. So all of a sudden, they now don't call you. They now cut you off uh, in a market that literally uh, quote unquote belongs to you yeah. um i don't think it's fair and i think that we we ought to do something about it is this something that we need to to talk about more yeah yeah well well i don't know um the the, the issue is that um, um i think we have to work hard really promote us uh, yeah. on on the afro beat um uh, in Scandinavia, we're going mm -hmm. to have major work. So we don't allow these people to come and take over our industry because everything. Yeah, we, we have worked hard for this, mm. and uh, we have done a major, major game. So, but they have the resources. That, that's yeah. why they are able to do. But the eight thing, you know, is about money too. Like yeah. the 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 artists themselves probably want to go for the the one that offers them better. That offers money. them the biggest, yes, the biggest payout. Yeah. Yes. So uh, and and the, and and the fabulous uh, venue. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So hey, by the way, yeah. let's do something about awards and winning. Remember this? Yeah. <laughs> it's still here, my brother. It is still here, my brother. I still keep it and I still have it and I still flash it proudly. Uh, so this is something that I got a while back. And we're hoping that at some point, you know, we continue to, to give out flowers to all those, give out credit, give out uh, accolades to those who have worked to keep the industry as high as it is, especially in this part. Now, um, this is the opportunity before we go for you to give us any other information that we need to know about what is going to happen on Friday, the 24th uh, in Sweden. Well, on Friday, it's going to be, um, um, as I said, it's going to be one of the best um, um, gigs um, on time. And uh, I think basically, We've been uh, doing our online tickets. I, I recommend people to 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 buy a ticket online because uh, generally the tables are almost gone, yeah. and um, and they should be the common time. And uh, some people have been asking me what kind of dress code. It's just, <laughs> yeah, classic and basically just being in classic dress. Um, get ready nice. get ready in a party mood i know that dominic amena is quite the quiet man that he is he's not telling you everything until you actually get there so this is going to be a massive crazy midsummer exclusive boat party on the 24th of june that's this friday so you don't want to miss it um tickets where can we get tickets um, tell us again where are the tickets, uh, where are the tickets? Uh, since they're selling out uh, okay and yeah, uh, can we get in touch with afro dance sweden to get the, the ticket information yeah, yeah yeah sure sure if you go to afro dance sweden website you can get the um uh, or the yeah the, the website on the on our our in, on facebook uh instagram all those information are out there yeah so mm. there. yeah uh, brilliant brilliant so that's it so make sure you get in touch with dominic and Mene, get in touch with afro dance sweden be part of this party that is happening on the 24th friday the 24th that's just this week a couple of days yeah. from now right yeah Hope just so days. close we've been looking Hope at it and waiting and waiting and so you don't want to miss this one this one is totally different it's definitely very special if you're in scandinavia if you're anywhere across europe and you're looking for somewhere that you want to spend and feel what it is to be part of a midsummer uh party uh in sweden this is one place that you want to go to now i've checked the weather and i see that the weather is going to be really really brilliant it's going to be please, please. sunny so everything is working in your favor this time around what are we expecting from you next after this one or is it yeah, after this, I think, as I said earlier, I think um, definitely by August or, or September, yeah. I'm definitely going to do something in, in the same boat. But okay. it's going to be an old, it's going to definitely going to be an old school event because I want to get back all 
all my old school jams. Fans. Yeah, old school jams. So wow. that's gonna be my my next goal. You're not next target. So that's it. A uh, big thank you to you, Dominic Emene, for being a part of uh, this event today. And another reminder that everyone who has not gotten a ticket yet, go get your ticket from Afrodance Sweden. The party is on Friday, the 24th of June this year. You don't want to miss it, so be there. All right, Dominic, thank you until we talk to you again next time. Now, remember, you can always reach um, where we're literally partners and family on this front. So, yeah, so when Dominic drops something, we will let you in on it. So thank you very much, Dominic. Until thank next you so time. Much. No I worries, brother. No close. worries, brother. Thank you. Thank you. All right, bye. All right, bye-bye. And that's it. Nice talking to you, Dominic and Mene, until next time when we come your way. Now, remember, go get your tickets from him. Afrodan Sweden is still, there's still some tickets. Most of the tables have been sold out, as you heard him say. So rush, 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 get it. The boat is stationary if you're if you're really scared of, you know, tipsy, turvy movement, especially after you've had had a few, because that's what the party is all about. That's what Midsummer is all about across Scandinavia. So you want to be part of that event. Uh, my name is Ehi Nakimio, and um, I will come back to you guys again soon. So, but until next time that I do that, I want you guys to have a splendid rest of the week. From me to all of you, bye-bye.